hey, hey, it's me, Meatbag McMurka, and today I want to talk to you about why I am not a Mormon. And I know it's a really weird topic for a lot of people to talk about, why they're not a particular religion, but I'll actually make this into my own, my own uh, little series about why I'm not so-and-so religion. But I'm starting off with the issue of Mormonism. I'm not an LDS or what they call Latter-day Saints. Uh, people who are Mormon don't typically call themselves Mormon. That's what, not what they call themselves amongst their own group. They probably say it to, to people uh, who aren't Mormon because people don't know what LDS is. But LDS stands for Latter-day Saints. Um, the official name of the Mormon Church is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So it is a church that worships Jesus Christ, that has this particular philosophy. Um, one of the things that many people know about Mormons is that they don't drink and they don't smoke. And personally, I think that, uh, I think that there's nothing wrong with having a vice, with having an addiction to a certain extent. As long as you're a good person, hey, you've got to, sometimes you just feel like you have to do what you got to do to sort of make it through life. And if it requires cutting back and, you know, getting kind of goofed up for a bit, then, hey, that's fine. I have no problem with that. And I don't think that, honestly, I don't think that God would really care if, you know, if, if the LDS God is, is correct. Um, the LDS believe in what's called uh, Elohim. Uh, it could mean either a male God or a female God. And oftentimes... Elohim is actually a reference to pluralistic gods. And the LDS do believe in pluralistic gods, which is, uh, they believe that if you actually go to the um, the celestial kingdom, the, the LDS believe in multiple layers of heaven, but the, the highest one is called the celestial kingdom. In order to get there, you've got to pay your soul tax, uh, known as tithing. Uh, you've got to do your good works. You've got to get your temple recommend. You've got a whole list of things that you shall not do. And I'm pretty sure that not drinking and not smoking is among them. Um, but, I, but I'm but i not LDS. I was just born and raised in Utah, and so I know quite a bit about the LDS church. You've got the celestial kingdom, this highest level of heaven. They believe in multiple layers of heaven and hell, kind of like Dante's Inferno, except for instead of having like uh, uh, just the hell side being multiple layers. Like they also believe that the heaven side is multiple layers. There's a similar kind of thing to purgatory. Basically, it's living life here on earth forever. Like, life kind of sucks. Life's kind of okay. It's not too bad. Uh, they do believe in different levels of hell where things are kind of shitty. And then they believe in multiple layers of heaven based upon um, the religion that you were part of, uh, based upon the way that you acted. If you were totally pure and uh, followed the words of wisdom, and you pay your tithing, um, you get your temple recommend, uh, you go up to the, what's called the Celestial Kingdom. When you go up to the Celestial Kingdom, you are then given a new universe to control, and you be actually become the god of this universe. And they believe that the god that they worship was, at one time, a person just like you and me. Not, not necessarily saying that the person was from Earth, but like some other entity that was on on his own planet and he did what exactly was required and boom he becomes god of his own universe and he can then you know toy with it so for me the, the issue with with being lds is that the lds church i think puts too many impositions on a person in terms of uh, what they can and cannot do regarding vices they don't like you drinking coffee they they don't mind you drinking coffee but uh, the really devout LDS people will not drink coffee because it's a mind-altering substance. And mind-altering substances are forbidden. Um, but they still have no problem consuming sugar, which is also a mind-altering substance. But that's a story for a different day. I myself don't put a lot of faith in the Book of Mormon in and of itself. So the Book of Mormon states that the Native Americans were actually uh, Jews. They were Jews that got some kind of a revelation from God. I believe the guy's name was uh, Lehi. And uh, Lehi was the 
like was the sort of the, the father of this of this family. Now, coincidentally, there is a city in Utah called Lehi. Lehi gets some some revelation from God, and he takes his family, who's uh, Nephi and Laman. They're sort of the two the two sort of figures of the Book of Mormon. So you have what are called the Nephites, which are the family of Nephi, and then you have the Lamanites, which are the family of Laman. They took a boat and they sailed from Israel, what's modern day Israel, around there. They sailed over to the Americas. And they don't go to like France and they don't go to Africa. Like they just sort of sail and they go all past all this land. And they just go out into the ocean and then they sail forever. They land in America and they start reproducing and procreating. Now my, my real question is, if you've only got two families that are, or if you've only got one family coming up, coming from the family of Lehi, if you've only got one family coming over, and then they're procreating and reproducing, that's a, that's a lot of incest. To the point where, where they would have probably died out due to all the inbreeding and the genetic defects that occur from genetic inbreeding. So with all this inbreeding, uh, they believe that that was what created the Native Americans. Um, they called the Native Americans the Lamanites. Now, why don't they call them the Nephites or the Lehites or whatever it is? It's because the LDS Church believes that the Lamanites ended up killing all the Nephites. Actually, the, the Nephites were really good and the Lamanites were really bad people and that they had a war and the Lamanites, the bad guys, beat the Nephites and got rid of the whole religion of God. All of the Native Americans nowadays are ancestors of the Lamanites, the bad guys. And so you've got one family that's doing a whole bunch of inbreeding, because this is before the time of Jesus. So this is like dozens of generations of ancestors going all the way back inbreeding, and that they somehow managed to survive. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Hell, it only took a few generations of inbreeding in Europe. I mean, and that, that's from, from a much bigger pool. It took uh, only a, just several generations for uh, hemophilia to become this big thing that people are dealing with. And that anybody who has hemophilia is actually, they say, a descendant of Queen Victoria. And so you have multiple generations of essentially inbreeding and in the, the course of this inbreeding you create different uh, you have different cultures going all the way across the US and then they somehow develop different languages that are in no way associated with each other uh, they don't have common ancestry like you'd figure that the that if they came from if they came from Hebrew Right, like, or, or whatever language that they spoke uh, back then, maybe Aramaic. I, I'm not sure. Hebrew, Aramaic, whatever it is. Right. So they, so they have this language that they come over with, and then one son's family kills the other son's family, and then they interbreed, and they go across the whole U.S and they develop languages that have no relation to each other uh, to the point where they're, they're totally distinct languages. They don't have a common root. Uh, romantic languages, languages that came out of Rome, like the French and the Spanish and the Italian and Portuguese, right? those are the four big romantic languages. They all have similar words, like their words have, have paths that connect to each other and it's like okay that word is similar to this word that's why if you were like living in France um, and you went to Spain like even though you may not be able to speak Spanish they can kind of guess as to what what it is that you're that you're talking about um, even if you were to speak in French not necessarily but uh, but but the the language in and of itself has uh, a root to it uh, an absolute root and uh, it, it's and the Native American languages don't have that. They're, they're different from each other. And so, for me, it, when it comes to being LDS, 
My main issue with the LDS religion is not so much the the things that they're saying, like about don't don't get addicted to things, uh, don't do things that alter your mind or whatever it is. But my main issue is that uh, I don't believe the story that the Book of Mormon presents. Um, and then there's also some other things associated with the uh, the way that Joseph Smith got the plates and how and how Emma Smith, uh, his wife, had sort of hidden the book, whatever, whatever it is. It's like it's really weird stuff, and and uh, uh, like Joseph Smith, I don't know. It's like honestly, I really I really don't care. But that's not for me. I just don't believe the story of the Book of Mormon. And that's why I am not Mormon. This has been Meatbag McMurka. I'm running for Pirate Party candidate in the state of Utah for governor.